great advanced class. Let's go ahead and get this homework going. We've got to find the missing guys in the ratio table, then write the equivalent ratios. Uh, again, we're going to go ahead and use the number that's here and uh, divide it by the number that's here to find the ratio. Okay. So two thirds divided by one third, well, sounds, sounds to me like we divide it by two, right? Because two times one over three will give us two over three. So we're going to have to multiply this to two. This will give me six over four. Six over four, just so you realize that I'm right, we got three over four, right? First, let's figure out the bottom one, make sure that we knew how to do that right. This is two over three divided by one over three. And we're working backwards here to see what we multiplied to one over three. This is going to give me two over three times three over one. Now it's going to give me six over three because two times three is six and one times three is three. Six divided by three is two. And that's why I said we multiply this by two, sorry, this by two in order to get two over three. Now we're going to multiply two over or three over four by two to find out what the next one will be. Three over two. Or three fours times two over one, three times two are going to be six over four. And that's going to give me one and two fourths when I turn it to a mixed number, which also equals one and a half because two and four divisible by two. So this is going to be one and one half. All right, now what did I multiply? to three-fourths to get to three. Let me erase all this. Well, I'm going to take three and divide it by three-fourths. When I do this, I have three times four over three. When I put three over one to make it a fraction, I realize I can get rid of my threes, and that's going to give me four over one, which is four. So I multiplied four, or excuse me, four to three-fourths in order to get three. So I have to multiply the bottom by four. If I multiply one over three by four, I can turn four to four over one. And that's going to give me four over three, which is equal to one and one-third. So here I'm going to put one and one-third. Now, what did I multiply to 3 over 4 to get 1? The only thing I can multiply to 3 over 4 to get 1 would be 4 over 3, the inverse, right? Let's think about that. If I have 3 over 4, it only makes sense I'm going to multiply it to 4 over 3 in order to go ahead and get 1, because then I'll have all these eliminated. I don't even really have to think about that. Oh, okay. So <coughs> I have to multiply the bottom by 4 over 3. And that's going to give me 4 over 9. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go to number 3. Write the name of the decimal number. Write the name of the decimal number. When I do this, I know it starts with a 7, and this is 1 in the 10th column, so this would be 7 and 1 tenth. Let's see, I'm going to write this here as small as I can. 7 and 1 tenth. That's kind of big. I'm going to see if I can change this spot. To fix it, let's turn it maybe to 12. Sorry, I gotta do the whole thing. And it doesn't look like it's taken, maybe if I highlight it. There we go. And I can probably move it like that, seven and one ten. Okay, let's see if we can go ahead and do number five. Now this would be 13 and six tenths. So I'm going to change it to whatever font this was. 
That was 11, so I'm gonna change this to 11. And make this 13. And six tenths. Oops. All right. The others are for you to do. I'm going to go to number seven. I'll write two equivalent ratios that describe this relationship. Well, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight baseballs. So I can say eight. And four coconuts. So eight, uh, let's see, eight to four, right? Eight baseballs to four coconuts. I guess I should write that out. Eight baseballs to four coconuts. Eight baseballs for every four coconuts. Okay, coconuts, excuse me, okay, or I could write it as four coconuts for every eight baseballs. But as I look closely at this question, it does just say, baseballs to gloves uh, so these are gloves not coconuts and i have to just write it in baseballs to gloves i can't go ahead and change it so let me go ahead and correct this little error that i made obviously uh let's see here first of all these aren't coconuts these are gloves second of all they're not looking for me to turn that around they're asking for another ratio. Oh, okay. Well, I can divide both of these by four. Eight divided by four is two, and four divided by four is one. So I could also say two baseballs for every uh, one glove. All right, that works. Um, and if I was to go ahead and put these in numerical form, I guess it could be eight colon or, or uh, two colon one. Okay, um, number eight for you to do. Let me scroll down for number nine. Uh, let's see, represent the relationship between distance and time in coordinate plane. A train travels 48 miles per hour in a coordinate plane. So they're wanting us to put this in a graph. So I'm just gonna pop this in here. Oh, this came out way big. All right, and we see that 45 miles an hour can be represented by this graph because it almost looks like it goes through 50. But remember, um, at two miles an hour, it's not quite at 103, it's definitely not at 150. So you can't say this is on 50. What I can say is I'm making sure it goes at 45 miles an hour because at five, right, at, uh, let's see, or actually at four, 45 times four is gonna give me what? Uh, zero, two, 16, 17, 18, right? And that's 180, and right there in between these two, pretty close, is just a little bit higher. How can I find it? I think I would have to keep going. I would feel more comfortable until I got to 450, really. But this line does show uh, it's going steadily up. Uh, let's see if I did 45 times 5. That's half a 10. So that should be right in between here, right? Uh, five times five, 25 times two, that's 20, 20, okay, 225 is definitely right in between 215, 220, and that's right in the center. So I'm comfortable with that graph right there, all right? 
I'm just going to erase this one. Because that's not quite in the middle, is it? That's going to be 180. That's going to be slightly higher. That does look a little like just slightly higher than the halfway line. This looks more like the halfway line. All right, we're going to move over to number 11. The sail travels 80, <coughs> 80 centimeters per minute. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and draw this one out. 80 centimeters in one minute. So I'm just going to make my graph like this, and this is kind of how I want you to make your graphs, all right? If this is 80 centimeters in one minute, you could put this as 80. You could put this as one, right? You could put this as 160, because 80 plus 80 is 160. You could put this at two. Nothing to stop you from making graph any of the way you want it, okay? You can make this at three, and you can make this at 240. If I was to make a line, okay, if I made uh, lines going across here, I could go ahead and make a line that goes from zero. That's what this is here, zero. And form a line going through every one of these, right? We'll put just a little arrow hat here to show our line goes on forever. All right, there's nothing wrong with showing this. All right, let's go to this one. Represent the ratio relationship using a graph. Okay, was there any other question on this before I move on? No? All right, making a graph to show these relationships. Uh, once again, I can go ahead and make a graph. Uh, I can label this in height and weight, right? So they're saying uh, my height will be 20, 40, 60. So I can say this is 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60. And if this is 30, 60, and 90, I could, if I want to, say this is, uh, let's go up by tens here. All right? 10, 20, 30. 40, 50, 60. 70, 80, 90. All right. And if I go ahead and make my lines here, I kind of didn't make my lines even, did I? This is way bigger. That's why this is not going to look real good. Uh, because my lines should be crossing evenly. It might not be here. Remember, 30 has to go through 20, 60, and hey, look at that. That's pretty close, I got to tell you. Uh, for not having a graph, I think I nailed it pretty close. Uh, I think if I was going to change anything, I would probably grab this line here. Whoa. Uh, back arrow there. Okay. I would probably take this line if it would let me. And it doesn't look like it's going to. And I'm going to grab this line. Ah. And bring it down just a smidgen. Okay. That would probably be more 30 than anything else. All right, and that way it crosses through all. Maybe I can even take this one and bring it down a smidgen as well to make it all even, okay? But if you do that, yes, you see where it crosses 20 to 30, 40 to 60, 60 to 90. 
All right, let's go to number 15. Uh, once again, I got to do ribbons here. I'm going to cheat a little bit and grab the answer one that we're going to show you in class. I'm getting a little tired, so I'm going to get this over with. I hate saying it, but these graphs are here. I can draw them just as well, but showing you with a already drawn graph and showing you by drawing one is all the same thing, really, isn't it? Okay. So this would look a little more like this. And how does this relate? Well, one ribbon, right? is going to be three strings. So since five is here, three is going to be about right here. And it shows one and three. That's another great way of labeling. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to take one of these over here, I could have easily took my label and said, this is uh, a snail travels 80 per one. So I could have put this and marked it one in 80, right? I could have marked this one here, two on 160. And I could have marked this one here. But all I needed to show was 80 and 1. So I'm good right here. This would have been 3 and 240. All right. Uh, same over here. I could have marked 20 and 30. I could have marked this one, 40 and 60. I could have marked this last one, uh, 60 and 90. I think that's an excellent practice to do to show that you know exactly where those dots belong. This is two and six, so at two, I'd be just a little above five, the two and six mark. Three and nine, so I'd be at three, and then I come up to nine and mark it. All right, let's go ahead and go to number 17. And now that's going to give me, ah, there we go, five and eight. So at five over here, I would be a little shy of 10 and put five and eight. At 10 and 16, so at 10 right here, I would go up to in between 10 and 20. Marked at 10 and 16, and then 15 and 24. I'd come to 15 and go up to 24. Mark at 15 and 24. All right, let's go to number 19. A radio station collects donations for a new broadcast tower. The cost of construction uh, to construct a tower is $25.50 per inch. All right, represent a ratio relationship using a graph. And I grab the one again that the book's going to show us. And it says here that, remember, it's uh, the cost to construct a tower is $25.50 per inch. So down here, I'm showing the money. And over here, I'm showing the inches, right? So if it's $25 an inch, that note means when I get to $10, it should be $250. Uh, excuse me, 10 inches, it should be $255. So if you look over here at 10 inches, it actually goes to 20, doesn't it? So let's try this out. If I was to take 25.50 and multiply it to 20, where would I be? 25.50 times 20. That's going to give me 510. You might notice right over here, it's really close to 500, but it's just a little bit past it. Okay? I would have personally marked this one to show uh, what it was at each level. So maybe I would have put, uh, let's see, the cost of new top. I probably would have put 20 and 510. That would have shown that I really had an idea for where this went. 
then I could have went over here at, let's see, if this is 500, this is 1,000, right? So where would it be at 1,000? Well, I would just have to take this to $25.50, multiply it to 1,000, right? That's going to move my decimal how many places? And actually, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, actually, it should have been by 40, 40 inches. Sorry about that. I don't know why I said 1,000 uh, times 40. So I'll take 25.50 and multiply it to 40. That would be 1,020. So I can mark this one, 40 and 1,020. And that would show that I knew exactly where those things were. How much does it cost to fund 4.5 inches? Wow. So we were really close to four, right? Um, 4.5 inches. Well, we're not going to multiply it to 20, that's for sure. Uh, so we're just going to say, if this is per inch, we'd have to take 25, 50, and multiply it to 4.5. That would give us 114.75. So that's $114.75. All right, let's go to number 21. Okay, just by looking at a graph, determine who earns more or greater hourly wage. Would it be you or your friend? Remember, the steeper the graph, the bigger the growth. If this was one hour, and this was, let's say, $5, and this was $10, let's just look at this for a minute. Uh, your friend would be earning less than $5. You would be earning $5 or more. So you, because your graph is steeper. Your line, oops. Is steeper. All right, let's go to number 23. Your freezer produces eight ice cubes every two hours. Your friend freezes, freezer produces 24 ice cubes every five hours. So your freezer gets eight ice cubes every two hours. And your friend produces 24 every five hours. Graph each into a ratio relationship. Oh, boy. All right, if I was going to do this, I guess I would make a line here, make a line here. Uh, remember, we're talking about hours and two hours and five hours. So we're going to put those over here and say this is, uh, we'll say this is one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, and five hours. Since we're only going to five, we'll stop there. Now this is ice cubes, right? And we're going to say this is, uh, we'll go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Now let's go ahead and mark these. Remember we're talking one hour, two hour, three hours, four hours. In five hours. So this represents hours. And then over here, we're talking about ice cubes. Cubes. This was 10, 20, 30, and 40. So if we do this, 2 and 8. So when this is 2, 8 is going to be about right here. Okay. I would even probably mark this 2 and 8 somewhere. And let's change the color. 
We mark this over here. Two and eight. And if I make a line through two and eight, and I'm going to make my line red to match my color there. Oh, wow, that line is way too fat. Now let's take that away. Uh, and we're going to make a nice thin line um, with red. Okay. Two going through eight. Okay. Yes, the next one is uh, 24. Five and 24. So when I reach five, I'm going to make this my blue line. Okay. Five is going to be coming up to 24. 24 is a little less than halfway, so it's going to be here. Okay. And I would make my line going through there. Just a little less than half. And I would probably mark it. Five, oh, it's still back in red, isn't it? Uh, five and then 24. Uh, it says graph into it. Now, whose freezer produces more? Well, your friend's freezer is steeper, so your friend. Your friend's freezer. Because it's steeper. It doesn't say to explain, so I'm not going to. Let's go on from I'm looking for 25. The company offers a nut mixture with seven peanuts for every three almonds. Okay? Uh, that's seven peanuts for every three almonds company changes the mixture to have nine peanuts for every five almonds now it's nine peanuts for every five almonds but the number of nuts per container does not change all right how many nuts are in the small the smallest possible container we've got to see where these end up being the same don't we <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Couldn't help it. Well, to do this, we're going to have to make a couple tables. Um, and these tables are going to look like this. Uh, it's showing that for seven peanuts for every three almonds, seven for every three. When we start adding these up, seven to three make ten, right? Uh, if we double this, Right? We multiply it by 2. 14 and 6 make 20. 21 and 9 make 30. 28 and 12 make 40. 35 peanuts and 12 almonds make 40. 35 peanuts, and that's uh, 7 times 5, of course, uh, times 3 times 5, which is 15, makes 50. 42 and 18 make 60. And 49 and 21 make 70. 56 and 24 make 80. And 63 and 27 make 90. Wow. Now let's check out the new mixture, which has nine peanuts for every five. Well, nine and five make 14, so we have to double that. 18 and 10 make 28. 27 and 15 make 42. 36 and 20 make 56. 45 and 25 make 70. 54 and 30 make 84. And 63 and 35 make 98. Remember it says the company changes the mixture, but the number of nuts didn't change. So which of these match down here? And when I look, I can see that 70 is a number here and here. So this has to be the mixture here that gave us 70 that didn't change. All right? Uh, it says, let's see, how many nuts are in the smallest possible container? That has to be 70. And graph each ratio relationship. Oh boy. Okay, uh, if I'm going to graph a relationship, uh, let's see. I would go ahead and make my graph like this, I guess. 
and we could go ahead and talk about peanuts and nuts, right? Oh, Lord. Um, let's see here. Would we go with peanuts and nuts? Would we go to total amount? I'm going to go peanuts down here to, what is it, almonds over here. Um, the peanuts was seven. So let's just make this 10, 20, 30. I guess I should make these lines. 10, 20, 30. I wasn't grabbing you. That was an accident. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Since we know we're meeting at 70, we're not meeting, but that's what the lines are going anyways. Uh, we know this is seven peanuts, right? So this would have been seven peanuts here. And now we need nuts. So let's put this at five. In fact, we'll leave it at 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Now remember, I'm just gonna put a black dot everywhere. I suspect we're going to be having these nuts here. Seven peanuts, so seven to every three almonds is going to be about right here. Next one is going to be 14 to 16. So if this is 10, 14 would be here, and 16 would be about, uh, actually six, would be about right here, right? 14 to six. Okay. And then we have 21 to 9. This would be 20. 21 would be here. And 9 would just be, be right under. Oh, I'm sorry. This was not above there. I got to take that back. 6 would be here, just above 5. So that was a 14. And 6 about right here. Next one is 21 and 9. 20 would be here, 9 would be about right here. All right? And then uh, 28, well, I guess we could go way down here to see 1, we said 70. So, uh, 49 and 21. So here would be 49, 10, 20. Um, I'm sorry, this would be, I guess we'd have to go. 63, right? 63, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 3 more would be about right here, and 27, and 27 would be about right here, right? So this line here is going to go from here all the way through these. Let's make that a black line so we can see it better. Okay, and that's going to be for the old mixture, right? Now we got to do the new mixture. The new mixture has nine peanuts for every five almonds. We're going to do a new mixture in red. Five peanuts, or nine peanuts, excuse me, for five almonds. That's going to put me about right there. Then 18 to 10, right? So 18 about right here. And then 10 would be here. Okay. So we can go all the way in and go towards uh, 63 again, right? And 35. So uh, 63 was over here, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 63. And 35, 10, 20, 35. So this line is going to actually be more like this. 
Oh, and I said I was going to make it red. Let's do that. Oh, Lord, that did not turn out good. Sorry about that. And we cross through those lines. And this would be the new one. Okay. So almonds cost more than peanuts. Should the company change the price of the mixture? And they said almonds cost more, right? So we're going to be buying a lot more almonds by the looks of it. Right? Because when we have 70 as a mixture, we're buying 25 almonds for every 45 peanuts. Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, if they, they said the new mixtures here, I would say that this is going to cost more because we're paying for more almonds, right? Um, might greatly depend on how much the peanuts are because we are um, getting five more almonds, actually and four more peanuts. This has got to be more expensive. So, yes, we should change it back, right? The new mixture is more, is too expensive. Uh, the new mixture is more expensive to make. All right, that's what I would say. Um, do I got any more? That was 25. You have number 26. I'm done for the night. Yay. I will see you in class for grading. Have a great evening.